In this video, I'm gonna show you some cool content tracking techniques for your blog, news website, or any other content-driven site. All and more coming up right after this. Hey there, and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com, helping you navigate the tools, tech, and tactics of today's digital marketing world. My name is Julian and today we're gonna go through some content tracking techniques. Now in a previous video, I told you all about what you should be tracking as a content website and I hinted at some techniques that you could be using. So today I wanted to deep dive into these techniques and I found five techniques that can be really valuable as a content driven website that wants to get more insights about the user behavior and how the readers are actually going through the content. Now, I haven't come up with these techniques myself. There are way more smarter people than me that actually written uh, up some blog posts about this and we'll also link them up in the description below, so be sure to check them out. And if you have a technique that you use often and any suggestions, then please uh, leave them also in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you as well. Now, we got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Number one, content grouping. Now I often talk about how you should be giving more context to the data that you have in your analytics already. And one of these techniques is content grouping. Now, what data do you have in your Google Analytics? It's actually page views. Now, how can you give these page views more context so you can better segment them and get better analysis really out of your data? This is where content grouping comes in. What it basically does is take your existing page views and group them together so you can be analyzing them in groups. Now the way to configure it, there are different techniques to actually send in content groups. You can do it on the measurement side in Google Tag Manager. You could also choose some rules within the interface to automatically group your page views in these content groups. And then you have a new menu point available where you can choose your content groups and you can actually configure multiple content groups in order to do different analysis. So I'd recommend you start out with a general side-wide content grouping such as are people on the blog, on info websites, on the homepage, or a contact us form. Just look at these different categories that you could be using. But then you can also in your second content group go deeper into the content itself. What is maybe the overarching topic of the post that they're reading? And then later you can use these content groups to break down your content into these groups and see how the behavior differs and the metrics change once you look at one or the other content group. Now this can also be super valuable once you use the behavior flow within Google Analytics because you can see how people are flowing between different content groups. So content groups are really a must when it comes to content websites but it could also be used in other contexts when you have an e-commerce website, for example. Number two, custom dimensions. Now going back to giving more context here, content grouping is just one feature that you can give more context, one that is pretty easily set up, but we can also use custom dimensions. Now custom dimensions gives us a little bit more flexibility to actually send in information into Google Analytics and have those available in our secondary dimension menu within Google Analytics. And what those really do is just give us the ability to send in more custom information that might be important when we analyze our content or any other part of our data in Google Analytics. So for example, you could be sending in who wrote this blog post, what is the author? You could also send in a word count to later analyze how a longer blog post with more words might correlate with more page views. So it gives you just much more information to build more context around your content, but also gives you the ability to segment your users in a certain fashion that can help you with your analysis later on. Now, if you're not sure what you should be sending in, I have linked up a blog post by thenextweb.com where they reveal there are 50 custom dimensions that they track in their Google Analytics account. Now, this is a premium account. In the free version of Google Analytics, you are only able to send in 20 custom dimensions. So you need to be aware of that as well. Number three, reader versus scanner tracking. Now, this comes back to actually measuring more data in your Google Analytics account. Now, you might be familiar with scroll tracking that you can easily install with Google Tag Manager. 
For content websites, I actually would recommend a technique that was published by Justin Cotroni of Google that distinguishes people who read through your content and how long they take in order to reach the end. Then they will be classified as reader or as just a scanner of your content. And you can have a distinction of, for example, how good a blog post was based on how many people actually became readers of that blog post. And this can be super powerful once you segment your users again in Google Analytics and see how the user behavior is of this one group that just scans your blog posts as opposed to those who actually read through it. And how can you get more from the scanners to convert into readers? I just really love the technique because again, it segments our users into two distinctive groups that we can analyze and see how they differ from each other. Now, if you want to install this with Google Tag Manager, Simo Ahava actually published a script on GitHub that lets you implement this with Google Tag Manager, since the original blog post from Justin Cotroni is pretty old already. All right, number three is engagement timer. So this is a technique that actually would track the engagement with your blog post on a time basis. You might know the old metric of time on site, which doesn't really do it justice when it comes to tracking the engagement with a content piece on your site. And you might want to become more accurate in that matter. So Simo Hava has wrote up a blog post about how to track engagement time, however you define it really in your Google Analytics for your content website. Now this will give you a far more accurate understanding of how long people are actually using your content piece in terms of looking at it, which can become really watered down nowadays with opening up a second tab with a blog post in it and Google Analytics counting that towards the average time on page. So it's not really fair to say that this metric is something that you should be looking at, but rather come up with your own metric, your own definition of what engagement actually means and track that again, pretty easily implemented with something like Google Tag Manager. And last but not least, number five is the enhanced e-commerce tracking. Now let's bend the rules of how Google Analytics actually works. In the end, Google Analytics just gives you a model of how you can be looking at data. So all the page views go in and they actually get grouped into sessions and then users. And once you understand that this is what is actually happening in the background, you can bend Google Analytics to the rules that you define. So Simo Hava has actually done this with the enhanced e-commerce tracking because enhanced e-commerce tracking is a great capabilities of tracking e-commerce websites within Google Analytics. But if you let go of the terminology that Google Analytics gives you, you can actually use it for your content website as well. So all features just like the funnel visualization or the product performance could be reshaped into something like post performance. How often was your post actually viewed? How many people took the call to action on your post? How's your homepage performing in terms of promotional clicks to your actual pages? This is all something that is bogged down in the model of enhanced e-commerce tracking within Google Analytics, but really it could be used for any kind of implementation to track your specific case a bit better. So really inspirational, check out this post and see how you could be using the enhanced e-commerce tracking for your business. All right, so there you have it. These are the five tracking techniques that you could be using to spice up your analytics tracking in your blog or your news website. If you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we're bringing you new videos just like this one every week. Now, my name is Julian. Till next time.